everyone. Welcome back. Today we're doing a Shop My Stash video. It's about time that we do one of these. I love incorporating these in my content. So we're going to go through my collection and pick out some products and then do our makeup together. I know a lot of you love these videos and I do too. So I hope you enjoy this one. And if you are new, my name is Blair. I do all kinds of beauty content here on YouTube. If you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe. We would love to have you here. And let's get into the Shop My Stash. All right, we're doing a Shop My Stash today. I don't really have any ideas for this video, but we're just gonna kinda go with it, see what happens. Uh, sometimes I try to go into these videos and have kind of a plan, but I don't really have a plan, so <laughs> we're just gonna pick some things. All right, let's pick a priming product first. I kind of wanna use this maybe, the Underglow Blurring Primer from Iconic London. This is a really nice glowy, but not too glowy, slightly smoothing primer. So I wouldn't really call it blurring. I do think it adds like a smooth texture and quality to the skin, but I don't think it blurs pores necessarily, but I really do like this one. I'm kind of wanting to use that, so I think we will. So that'll be it for primer. I'm not gonna use a matte or a pore filling primer today, I don't think. So that should be good. Now for foundations, um, let's see here. We've got Tom Ford, we've got Ilia. Um, we could use this from Westman Atelier. This is the Vital Skin Foundation Stick. Is this what we should pick? Let me look over here and see if anything else is jumping out at me. Um, the only other thing I was maybe thinking about is this. This is actually a, rel a pretty new product to me, the Performer Foundation from About Face. I got this during the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty, and I've worn it a few times, but I don't think I've filmed with it that I can remember. I'm kind of feeling the Western Atelier today for some reason, so I think we'll go with that. We'll use this in a different video, but... I think we'll go with Westman for the foundation today. For a corrector, let's see here. Ooh, I kinda wanna do, oops. Kinda wanna do this. This is a mini NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in the shade Honey. So this is like a pinky, peachy undertone concealer and I used to probably I don't know, it's probably been about a year ago or so, I would use this as a corrector, and actually it works really well for that. But I haven't done that lately. I kinda wanna try that again. I think we'll go with that for corrector. And then for concealer, let me move over there. What am I in the mood for? Natasha Denona, Chanel. Glossier, um, Tom Ford. We could go with Tom Ford since we're using a cream foundation. I don't know if that would pair super well over the NARS Creamy for corrector though. Now this I really have not used in a while. Urban Decay Quickie Concealer. I was just watching someone I think it might have been Morgan Turner. She was talking about like her top three concealers and this was one of them. And it was this, Natasha Denona and Tower 28, which I love those concealers as well. I have not used mine in a long time. So actually I might do that for concealer. And that should be it for this drawer. For a powder, should we do I was gonna say maybe Invisimat from Fenty. So this is a white, like translucent powder. This one is not typically one I would use by itself though to set. This is kind of like a finishing type powder. So I don't know, I don't know about that to set my face. We've got the Tarte powder, which actually, you know what? We might pull out this Tarte pink powder. I might use that for like the T-zone. Actually, you know what, we'll just pull this out too. Maybe we'll use this, maybe we won't, I don't know. Powders, I kind of have to see like what the makeup looks like to decide what powder to use sometimes. So 
I think we'll go with those two for right now and I can always pick something else or also I have this. I feel like this one always gets neglected from me. Maybe we'll pull this out actually instead. The Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Pressed Powder. Yeah, kind of in the mood for that one. Okay, for a highlighter. I'm kind of not feeling like I want a highlighter to be honest. So I think we might skip highlight for today. Now for bronzer. We haven't used this lately, the Say Dew Bronze. This one is in the shade Sand. Maybe we'll do that. And let's see, what else could we pull from here? I guess that's really it for this drawer. For a blush, always the hardest to choose. Um, let's see. We've got the road blushes. Oh, Belle, come here. Don't cry. Come here. We've got persona blushes, Armani blushes, house blacks. Ooh, we do have this. Should we use this? This is Westman Atelier also, but this is, this was just a different packaging they had for one of the blushes. It came in one of the Nordstrom anniversary gift sets. It's in the black packaging. This is the shade. It's either doo-doo or dodo. I think it's doo-doo, but it's this really beautiful, kind of like a cooler toned, pinky mauve almost. It's really pretty. I kind of want to use this. I think we might pull that out, especially since we're using the Westman foundation stick. Oh my gosh, let me go check on my cat. All right, I think she's good. She's playing, but she's like crying at the same time. I think I might just do the cream and skip a powder this time. Yeah, so we're just gonna do the Westman blush and that's it. For eyes, brows, and mascara. Okay, I really don't know what I wanna do for eyes. I might pull this out and use this as a base, possibly the Danessa Myrick Color Fix in nude number three. I really like this product. I haven't used it in a few weeks, so I think I might pull that out. But okay, what palette should I use? Um, usually there's like one palette that's like screaming at me, but I guess we could use the golden palette. It's been a while for this one, but is that like too gold? I don't know if that's exactly what I wanna do. I also have this, well, I have three of these YSL palettes. Maybe we should use this. These are so nice. I just, I kinda wanna use that actually. Let's do that instead of the golden palette. That just feels like, more of what I'm going for. I also have the pink purple one and I have, oh, this one's so pretty too, Stora Dolls. Maybe we'll pull out Stora Dolls too because I'm not really sure what I want to do on the eyes. Yeah, I think we'll do that and we'll make that decision later. Okay, for an eye primer. Oh, actually I don't need one. I'll just use this Danessa Myricks as the eye primer. Mascara, honestly, I don't really know. I'm gonna use this maybe YSL Lash Clash. This has been open for a long time, so I probably need to pull that out, see what it's like, see if it's okay. So we'll pull that out. For brows, honestly, I'm probably just gonna use my regular brow products. I just pulled some new things actually in for my everyday makeup drawer, so I'll probably just use those things this time. And then I do want to pull out an eyeliner. Do I want to do Victoria Beckham or do I want to do, I have another liner that I love. It's Makeup by Mario, but it's the soft brown. So it's a very soft kind of warm bronzy brown. I have not used this shade. I feel like this might go well with the eyes possibly. I think we'll pull that out. And also, I also have Victoria Beckham in bronze, which is also beautiful, but I might use the soft brown from Mario this time because it's been a little while since I've used that one. And is that everything? Yes, that is it for this drawer. 
Okay, for the lip, I don't really know. The lip is so hard to do before you see the whole makeup look, you know? I think I'm gonna pull this out, mainly because I have not used this in a very long time. It's the Pillow Talk, I think this was the, oh, the Pillow Talk Big Lip Plumpgasm in the shade Bare Medium. It really does plump and uh, I don't remember a ton about it, to be honest, because it's been a while since I used it, so I think we will pull that. Ooh, I also have this gloss, it's so pretty too. This is Chanel in the shade 722. Forget what the actual name is, but the number is 722. It's kind of a cooler toned mauve gloss, but it's very, very pretty, but that's similar to Charlotte Tilbury, I guess. I also have this lipstick from Patrick Ta. Actually, we might pull this out. This is the shade Flushed. Kind of like a neutral blush pink. It's not super warm or super cool. It kind of lay, or it kind of sits right in between, which I like about it. Um, yeah, we might pull that out. Maybe we'll pair that with that Charlotte gloss. And then, let's see, for lip liner, we could do Maybelline. This is a great liner. This is a pretty color worthy kind of similar to the lipstick color i don't know if i want it to be that similar um also have wise from rare beauty which is like a brown that one might be pretty maybe we'll pull that and let's see mm, maybe we could do lisa eldridge also i don't know which one i'm gonna go for this is one in i think we might do one of those, or you know what else we could do? I just thought of these Westman lipsticks, Jerev and Piquet. I like them both. I honestly kind of like to mix them. I think we'll pull those out too. I'll just have to pick once we do the makeup, but I think that should be good. So I think that is everything. All right, let's get into the makeup. We're gonna start with SVF and we're gonna use a different one today. We're gonna to switch it up. This is Summer Fridays, the Shade Drops. This is a mineral SPF and it's SPF 30. That's the only thing. I wish it was at least SPF 40, but it's not. It's SPF 30, but I have this and I wanna use it up. Probably about like halfway done with it now. This is one thing I really like about this SPF is it is, not dewy and it's not matte. It's like a natural finish. So it's kind of right in between, which is actually pretty nice with an SPF because sometimes you don't want a really, really glowy SPF, but you don't want your skin to look matte either. You just kind of want something in between and that is what this is for me. This one has in the past pilled with certain makeup products. So that's like one of the reasons I don't use this one more, just because I can't stand it when that happens, but I don't know. We're gonna test it today and hope for the best. For primer, we're gonna use this one from Iconic London, it's Underglow Blurring Primer. I really, I really do like this a lot. It's just not, Sometimes I don't think that I need it necessarily if my, especially if I use a really glowy SPF, but since this SPF is not super glowy, I think it's good to use something like this. But this primer is really, really nice. This is another product I feel like a lot of people talked about a few years ago when it came out. It was in a lot of people's favorites and you don't hear about it anymore which is just kind of standard. Beauty products come and go, new things come out, but this is a great product. And I was saying in the earlier clip uh, when I was picking the products that it's hard to explain the finish on this. It has a glow, obviously. You can see the glow that it adds, but it's not glittery or metallic or anything like that, but it does add this really smoothing kind of quality to the skin, but I wouldn't say it blurs your pores, but I think overall it just does kind of smooth the surface of the skin, which is kind of unusual for a glowier priming type product. You don't typically find both of those things in one, but this one you do, and I like it. 
For foundation, we're going to use this one from Westman Atelier. This is the Vital Skin Foundation Stick in the shade Atelier number no. 2. It's been a while since I've used this, but I really liked it. So I'll be curious when I use it again when I think about it. I, I want to say I remember I was kind of surprised by how much I liked it when I tried it before. Um, let's see what brush should I use. Um, I'm going to try this Sigma brush. This is the F48, the soft coverage. It's a pretty dense brush, but I do find that works the best with stick foundations like this. I wasn't sure about the shade, but I actually think the shade is okay. Yeah, I'm remembering this now. I really, really liked this before. I remember I thought it looked very natural on the skin, not heavy, because sometimes, depends on what the stick foundation is, sometimes they can look a little bit heavy, especially if you apply a lot of them. And that, I can't get over how pretty that looks. It looks so smooth and just like a slight glow, but just very, very slight. It looks very, almost looks a little bit blurring on my skin, which I don't really remember from the last time I used it, but that is a beautiful foundation. I'm actually thinking about doing a full face of Westman Atelier. Let me know if that's something you would be interested in seeing. I've tried a lot of the products. I haven't tried everything. But I'm thinking about maybe buying the things that I haven't tried and doing like a collective review of the brand because it's one of my favorites. So let me know if that's something you would be interested in. Let's go in with this NARS Creamy Concealer. So this is a little baby one. This is the shade Honey. And what I used to use this for is I would put a little bit, just like I would a color corrector, but I just use this because it, it has a great undertone for correction. So that is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to put a little bit down here as well where I have this melasma. I just realized when I was going through my makeup, I haven't done this in a while. But I used to use this all the time for this step. And I am going to blend that in with this Smashbox Blurring Concealer Brush. I was actually thinking about this concealer earlier. I'm trying to think about uh, Sephora sale content because really that's coming up in like three weeks or two and a half weeks. And I was thinking about things that I wanted to buy during the sale and I actually kind of want to buy this concealer again, like just in my regular shade because I used mine up a while ago, but this is still one of the best concealers. To me I do still think it's great and I kind of miss having it so I might buy a new one during the sale. That honey shade does such a good job I'm so glad I pulled that out again and actually it does really well with covering the melasma as well so that's a really good tip if you have never used a color corrector or maybe you can't find one that you like or you can't find the right color Sometimes you don't need a color corrector. Sometimes you just need a concealer with the correct undertone for your discoloration, whatever it is. And sometimes that works just as well, if not better. But yeah, that shade did really, really well with that. For concealer, I'm kind of thinking of switching this. I pulled out this Urban Decay Quickie Concealer. I'm trying to decide if I think this is too yellow. Um, I kind of want to go for something a little bit more neutral. Let me swatch this one. That's actually, I guess it's okay. I think this one is, yeah, 30 in in. Oh, you know what? This concealer smells really bad. I wonder if this has gone bad. It smells really, really strong, kind of like paint thinner. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to use that. Sorry. I... I have a feeling that might have gone bad. I kind of want to look at the shades in this again. Maybe I'll buy that concealer again. I don't know, but I think that one's gone bad. All right, change of plans. I'm going to use Tower 28 
in the shade DTLA, which is one of my favorite concealers, and the shade is just perfection. It's so good. It's truly like a neutral undertone, and it's, it's really, really good. All right, and I'm just gonna blend with the N14. Honestly, I guess I should have used the Westman concealer now that I think about it. I had it right here. Oh well. I've been using that one a lot, so. Tower 28 though, in this shade is one of my favorites. For bronzer, I think I am gonna use this one from Say. This is the Dew Bronze in the shade Sand, and I am gonna apply mine from the back of my hand. I just prefer doing it this way. I like this product. I will say I've never just like fallen madly in love with it, but I never thought like it's a bad product, but I definitely haven't like been, oh, this is a favorite, you know? It's not super pigmented either. Like I was, I don't know why I was thinking this had more pigment to it, but it definitely doesn't. Cause I'm, I put a good bit on my hand and I mean, definitely don't get a ton of color from it, which is not bad, but I don't know why I was thinking this was more pigmented. And I'm using the Mario F1 brush for this, which Looks like this, it's an angled brush and then like a smaller one on the other end. And I'm just kind of using what's left in the brush for my forehead. For a blush, we're gonna use this from Westman Atelier. This is their Baby Cheeks Blush Stick in the shade Doo Doo. I'm gonna say it's Doo Doo. I think that is how you say it, I think. This is what the color looks like. So it's kind of like a magenta shade. I honestly, I think I've only used this maybe one time. I got it during the Nordstrom anniversary sale. My favorites from Westman are Petal and um, Chouchette, I think is how you say it. I love those two, but ooh, that color is also very pretty. This shade is pretty pigmented, so I'm gonna kind of tap over it with my foundation brush, but the tone is honestly kind of similar to the other ones that I've been loving, like Victoria Beckham, Fame, Patrick Ta, She's Wanted, Jam from Persona. But I love these like kind of cooler, magenta, mauve kind of colors. For powder, I'm gonna use this one from Tarte. So this is the pink powder and it's the creaseless setting powder. And it looks like this. It's just like a light pink. Now this is truly one of the most blurring powders I've ever used, ever. So if you want like a super, super blurred finish, this will give you that. Uh, Cause truly out of all the powders that I've tried, this one is, it's gotta be one of the most blurring ones by far. So I'm gonna use this Mario F3 brush. I'm gonna kind of pick it up on the brush, but then I'm gonna really tap it off on the palm of my hand and kind of work it into the brush. And just start setting. Do you see the difference? between this eye and this eye. It is extremely blurring, but for that reason, I will say if you go in like very, very heavy with it, I do think it can look a little bit heavy. So if you're looking for like a lighter weight, lighter looking setting powder, I probably wouldn't go for this one. It's just so blurring that I do think, I mean, it, it does look like powder because it's so, it's so blurring. It doesn't, I would, doesn't scream like natural powder to me. So just keep that in mind. I still like it, but it's not like a no makeup, makeup kind of powder, if you know what I mean. Okay, I feel like I need just a little bit of glow. The, the powder, it 
really took down all the glow. I want just a, bl I want a blush, I think, with a little bit of glow in it. So I'm gonna take a little, like I'm talking a little bit of this mauve haze or what is this one called? Yeah, mauve haze in the number one palette from Hourglass. And I'm adding like, I'm talking like just a little bit. So I don't really need a lot of pigment. I just kind of want a little bit of the uh, glow back. And this shade is very similar to that Westman shade. Let's do the brows. I'm gonna do my go-to brow combo right now, which I didn't really know. If, I always leave the brows in for the most part, but if you would rather me like cut out the brows, I can do that. I just never know, because I know some people like to see like everything. So I hate to just cut everything out, but if you'd rather me cut it out, let me know. I just never really know what the best thing to do is. So I'm gonna use this, uh, not Westman, Victoria Beckham Baby Blade. And I just kind of brushed the brows down so I could see the shape on the top and I kind of kind of line it and then brush the brow back in place. And then I kind of go underneath as well. And this brow pencil, I believe, is the shade taupe. Yes, taupe. I'm going to attempt to do my brows with just this pencil, but it's so hard for me to not use the Maybelline build a brow at this point. I just can't stop using it, but like I just shook this like it was the Maybelline build a brow. And then to set them, I'm also going to use from Victoria Beckham the Feather Fix Brow Gel. This one is in Light Brunette. This one is okay. It's not like a favorite for me. It's just okay. I don't mind the little brush. It has like a little brush tip applicator, but I do think... The product is just really, really liquidy, and I find if you have too much on the brush, it can make a mess pretty quick. But I wanna use it, cause I have it. The hold is not super strong on this either, so if you need a really strong hold in your brow gel, I would not direct you to this one. All right, let's move into brows. I'm gonna first apply this Danessa Myricks color fix in the shade nude number three. This is a really good just like all over shade for me just to like even out my lids, but it's also really good as primer. So that is shade nude three right there. But the thing about these is they are extremely pigmented. So you, you do not need much of these at all. So I would say definitely apply from the back of your hand and use like a fluffier brush to kind of lightly apply it because they are extremely, extremely pigmented, but they last all day long and they're great bases. And this shade for me is really, really good, which is nude number three. It's like the perfect tone to just even out my lids. All right, for eyes now, do we want to go 300 or 100? I'm thinking 300. I don't think I want to go this cool with the eyes today, but still like such a perfect palette. But I'm going to go in with shade 300, which looks like this. And okay, we'll go with the brown right here. So this is a warmer kind of mid-tone brown but these palettes from YSL are heavenly I don't even know what other word to use to describe them but the formula is absolutely heavenly easy buttery smooth like another formula that you could truly 
you could probably close your eye and do this with your eyes closed. And I promise you, <laughs> as long as you got like somewhere close to where you want the shadow, like placement wise, you would love the outcome. It's just the most buttery smooth formula. Kind of want one of the newer shades actually. I was looking at them on Sephora. I might end up picking one up honestly during the Sephora sale because there's like four new ones. All right, now I'm going to go into this kind of bone color right here. And I'm going to use an A501 from BK Beauty. And I'm going to apply this in the inner part of the lid right here and leave my eye open and kind of go up and over into that crease color. Something I've been doing lately that really, I think, just kind of opens up my eye shape. All right, and then I'm gonna take the brown in the palette and I'm gonna use this with the Refer 13 brush, which is just a really, really tiny little blending brush. And I'm going to apply this in the outer corner, kind of feather it along the lash line as well, like just very lightly. And then we'll just go over it really lightly with the first brush we used, which was the A503. And then I'm going to add just a little bit more. That's another really nice thing about this YSL formula is they're very, very buildable. So you can add more if you want more pigment or you can keep them pretty soft and more on the sheer side. They do have a little bit of fallout in the pan when you dip your brush in. So that's one thing I did want to point out about this formula, but as long as you tap your brush off, before you go on the eyes, I don't have any issue with blending or anything like that. Or fallout on the face, as long as you tap your brush off pretty well. And you know we have to use the topper in here, which is gold and looks like that. I'm just gonna tap this in the center of the lid. All right, for the lower lash line, I'm gonna take the warm brown and I'm gonna mix in a little bit of the beigey color also, just kind of tap into both and just apply that on the lower lash line. All right, I'm gonna take that Makeup by Mario liner in soft brown now and I'm gonna go in between the lashes with this. I've been trying to do this more ever since uh, his master class I was at. This is how he applied liner. He like went in between all the lashes and like wiggled the liner in there. But it's definitely not easy to do that. And then I'm just gonna flip liner and use the brush on the other end and just kind of flick it out just a little bit. All right, I just curled my lashes and I'm gonna use YSL Lash Clash in the brown. It's been a while since I used this one. Yep, it's definitely dried out. So this is gonna be the last time for this one. Great mascara though. If you want really, really intense volume and just a lot, a lot of lashes, this will, this will give you that. This isn't really giving it the full effect just because mine is 
old. <laughs> it needs to be thrown away, but uh, a new tube of this will give you very volumized, big, like in your face lashes. Don't judge this mascara too harshly <laughs> based on how it looks because this is not how it looks at all. It's very clumpy and um, very like thick looking on my lashes. I mean, it always looked kind of thick on the lashes, but it's definitely not looking its best right now. But that tube is very old. So don't judge it too harshly, but let's finish up with the lips. I think we might go for Lisa Eldridge and this is the shade 1N. I still need to order some Lisa Eldridge lipsticks. I just haven't gotten around to it. You know what, I wasn't too sure about this color the first few times I used it, but I actually like it more now that I've had a little bit of time with it. I kind of want to use this from Westman, but I also kind of want to use this. This is Patrick Ta in, let me just swatch them both. I think these two are actually going to be similar to each other. Well, let me just swatch them. Well, Patrick Ta is a little bit warmer, I think, a little bit more peachy. The Jerev from Westman is more rosy, not quite as like peachy pink. What to do, what to do. I also have Jerev, but I think this one, or not Jerev, Pique. But this one um, is really cool tone, so that's it there. I don't think I want to go for that one. I usually honestly mix that one with Jerev by Westman, or we could just put the blush on my lips. Maybe let's try this. Oh, it's pretty on the lips actually. I didn't use much of it because that color does have a lot of pigment, but actually that looks pretty. Love that. And then maybe we'll do, should we do this Charlotte gloss? Yeah, okay. I'm gonna do a little bit of that in the center. This one does tinkle. FYI, it works, it really does plump the lips, but um, it tingles, so <laughs> just keep that in mind. All right, this is the finished look. I actually love this makeup very, very much. I was unsure at first if I was gonna love the eyes with the blush color, just cause the blush is a little bit more blue, kind of cool toned, and the eyes are more warm, obviously, but you know what? Sometimes I do find pairing cool and warm tones together, for me at least, is like the best combination. It just, I like a little bit of both. It kind of neutralizes everything out, and I feel like that's what we did with this look, so I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed this Shop My Stash. I say this every time, but I always want to incorporate the Shop My Stash videos on my channel as well as the new makeup stuff because I want a mixture of both. I love the new products, but I also love using the products that I have and I just love makeup in general. So on my channel, I always want you to get a little bit of both. So I will always do the Shop My Stash videos and I hope you enjoy them. I you know, try to make this a regular thing here on my channel and I always enjoy filming them. So. I hope you enjoyed it and I will have all the products listed for you and linked in the description box and in YouTube shopping as well. If you do purchase anything through any of my links, I do make a commission and it just supports my channel. So thank you so much. And if you are new, I hope you'll subscribe and follow me over on Instagram at simply.blair and TikTok simply.blair1. And I will see you again very soon. Remember, simply be you.